Harrison Dillard moved across from the high hurdles to win the Olympic sprint title, but his successor in the Helsinki Games of 1952 made an even longer journey. Lindy Remigino came from nowhere. When Paavo Nurmi carried the torch into Helsinki's Olympic Stadium, he ignited one of the most memorable celebrations of sport the world has ever seen. The Games of Helsinki brought the Soviet Union into the fold and made the Olympics a truly international festival. Yet even more memorably, they provided the spectacle of Emil Zatopek at the height of his powers. In Helsinki, he was to win three gold medals. Zatopek was a predictable hero. But Lindy Remigino was one of those athletes the Olympics throw up from time to time, just to preserve our faith in miracles. His entire career was built upon an ability to seize the passing chance. He took up sprinting after failing as a quarter miler at high school in Hartford, Connecticut. Even then, he didn't make the school team until the first choice man dropped out through injury. Lindy stepped in and took an instant liking to the distance. But his performances were erratic, and even when he moved to Manhattan College in New York, he wasn't highly regarded. Then suddenly, things began to fall into place. Jim Golliday, widely acknowledged as the world's finest sprinter, pulled a muscle and was ruled out of the 1952 Olympics. His American colleague, Andy Stanfield, decided to run just the 200 meters. When he finished second to Art Bragg in the US trials, Lindy, a man whose sprinting style was described by one unkind critic as a farmer carrying two churns across the barnyard, was on his way to Helsinki. These would be known as the friendly games, but the competition was as demanding as ever. As well as his fellow Americans, Art Bragg and Dean Smith, Lindy had to contend with Jamaica's Herb McKenley and the fastest man Britain had ever produced, the co-world record holder, MacDonald Bailey. When Bragg, the favorite, broke down with a pulled muscle in his semi-final, a strange kind of luck was again working for Lindy. He took advantage and cruised into the final. The 100 meters gold medal now lay between four men, Bailey, Smith, McKenley, and Remigino. On the day of the race, Lindy considered his strategy. There's only one plan in the 100 meters, and that's getting fun to stay there. Uh, you're not gonna take anyone like McKinley from behind, so I wanted to get a good, good start, an excellent start. And in pops McKinley, for heaven's sakes. And he's got a big smile on his face. He, he's always got a smile on his face. He says, Lindy McDonald Bailey is ready to be had. He's so doggone nervous. I just left him, he says. You can forget him. You can forget him. So he kind of perked me up at that time. The track was very heavy. It was waterlogged. There was a lot of rain, so much so that they had to burn it off, put kerosene and, and put a match to it and dry off the track. And this made me very, very tense. And, and you know, it, I think it made a big difference in my start. The 100 meters, what a race this was. Watch Remigino, the American, third from the right. Next to him, far side, McKenley, Jamaica, and McDonald Bailey, second from the left. Bailey was slowly away, McKenley suffered a dreadful start, but by 50 meters, Remigino was scampering clear. It was the classic blanket finish. Some felt McKenley had won, others saw it as a dead heat. The judges studied the photographs, Remigino fretted. I'm way out in front at about 50, 60 meters. And I did something tactfully wrong. I see the tape coming up, I'm gonna win this thing, <laughs> I'm gonna win it. So I started leaning into it, and lo and behold, you don't realize how far you are away from that tape. I started slowing up because my stride is getting shorter, and the whole field is closing in on me, and lo and behold, I thought I lost the whole thing. And I'm angry because I thought I blew it. But the anger subsided when the verdict was announced some 20 minutes later. Fourth, Smith in 10.4 seconds. Third, Bailey, 10.4 seconds. Second, McKenley, 10.4 seconds. First, by just one inch, Remigino in 10.4 seconds. Just 14 inches covered the first four runners. So the gold for Lindy and the title the fastest man on earth. Among those to congratulate him, teammate Perry O'Brien, who just won the shot put title. Perry said, Lindy, you don't realize what you've done. You've just won a gold medal and that's gonna change your whole life. You don't realize how important that is. And lo and behold, he was right because uh, once you're a gold medalist, you're a gold medalist forever. The sprinter who had traveled to Helsinki without a prayer celebrated in the traditional manner of American sprint champions by helping to win a relay gold medal in a team which included his own athletics hero, Harrison Dillard. 
After the games, Lindy set out on a European tour and remained unbeaten over 100 metres. Then he returned to Connecticut and a hero's welcome. He continued with his track career, but he was never to reach the heights he achieved on that rainy day in Helsinki. In 1956, after failing to make the American team at 200 metres, he retired from active athletics at the age of 24. Today, he still lives in Hartford, where for more than 30 years he's been a successful high school athletics coach. Recently, he opened a sports goods store, where the whole family help out. Hi, guys. Hi. Lindy also guides the career of his teenage son, Michael, a promising half-miler. There were those who said that Remigino was a lucky champion, that he wasn't a truly outstanding sprinter. Lindy himself has a philosophical view. You only get one chance, and the winner is the man who takes it. You train a lifetime, and then it's your turn uh, to prove who's the fastest in the world in the Olympic Games. And that's what it boils down to. You train all that time for 10 seconds.